once long ago, in a remote village in East Africa. Encircled by sprawling savannas and ancient towering trees, there lived a girl named Amina. Amina was unlike any other child in the village. Her birth was remarkable. She was born after 12 full months rather than the usual nine. This strange occurrence led to much gossip. Some villagers whispered that she was special, while others found the situation unsettling and even a little frightening. The night Amina came into the world, the sky was illuminated with dazzling stars, but this joy was mingled with sorrow, as Amina's mother passed away shortly after bringing her into the world. Her father Hassan, a gentle and hard-working farmer, was left to raise her alone. He became both mother and father to Amina, cherishing her with all his heart. Often, Hassan would take her to the farm, laying her beneath a large baobab tree while he worked in the fields. Amina adored watching the leaves flutter in the breeze and listening to the songs of the birds. One day, when Amina was only six months old, something strange occurred. She suddenly began crying loudly, in an unusual, piercing way that startled her father. Alarmed, Hassan rushed to her side, just in time to witness the enormous baobab tree she had been resting under come crashing down where she had just been. The villagers were astounded. How could she have known? They murmured. Is she magical? From that day on, Amina was seen as different. She would often giggle in the middle of the night, as if playing with unseen companions, or cry out as though frightened by things no one else could perceive. As Amina grew older, she began to say things that later came true. She would tell her father, it will rain today even when the sky was clear, and sure enough, rain would fall. But soon, her predictions began to trouble the villagers. Once she said, I am sad because tomorrow someone will leave us and the next day, a child from the village fell ill and passed away. The villagers grew wary of Amina. They whispered behind her back, asking, is she a witch? How does she know these things? Poor Amina felt isolated, not understanding why people were so afraid of her. She was just a girl with knowledge that even she could not explain. This is how Amina's story began a girl born beneath a starlit sky, loved by her father, but feared and misunderstood by the people of her village. As she grew, Amina would discover more about the mysterious gift that set her apart and how it would forever change her life as well as the lives of those around her. Amina became the subject of hushed conversations among the villagers who viewed her predictions with a mixture of awe and fear. Even though her father Hassan always told her, you are special, my daughter, in an attempt to comfort her, Amina often felt lonely. The other children avoided playing with her and their parents would hurriedly pull them away whenever she came near. One day, Amina made a prediction that terrified everyone. She said, I see a shadow falling over the chief's home and it will bring great sorrow. The villagers were filled with dread. Their chief, a man named Abdu, was highly respected, almost like a king to them. They murmured among themselves, What does Amina's vision mean? Is something bad going to happen? Not long after her ominous words, tragedy struck. The chief's youngest son, a boy known for his laughter and joy, suddenly became ill and died. Grief consumed the village and their fear of Amina deepened. Her words are cursed, they said. She brings bad luck. They were unwilling to accept that Amina was merely foreseeing events, not causing them. The frightened villagers gathered and went to Chief Abdu, saying, We must do something about Amina. She's a bad omen for our village, the chief, though wise and kind, found himself in a difficult position. He knew that Amina was innocent, but he also needed to ease the villagers' fears. Hassan, devastated by the villagers' accusations against his daughter, went to Chief Abdu and pleaded, Please don't punish my daughter for something she cannot control. She does not cause these things to happen, she merely knows they will. The chief decided to speak directly with Amina. He asked her, why do you think you see these things before they happen with her wide, innocent eyes? Amina replied, I don't know, chief. I just see them in my mind, like pictures in a dream. Hearing her sincerity, Chief Abdu felt deep sympathy for her. He addressed the villagers, we cannot hold Amina responsible for the things she sees. She is just a child, a special one, and we should not fear her. However, despite the chief's words, the villagers remained wary. 
avoiding both Amina and her father. Amina grew more and more withdrawn, spending her days either helping her father in the fields or sitting quietly under the baobab tree where she felt a strange sense of comfort. But the fear within the village continued to grow. Soon the villagers approached Chief Abdu again, saying, We can no longer live in fear of Amina's predictions. She must leave our village. The chief was torn. He had always been kind to Amina, but the pressure from the villagers was immense. Though he did not want to send her away, he also wanted to maintain peace in the village. Hassan, desperate, begged, Please don't send my daughter away. She is just a child, and she means no harm, but the villagers were resolute. If Amina stays, we will always live in fear. We must protect our village, they insisted. With a heavy heart, Chief Abdu made the difficult decision that Amina should leave the village. Amina was devastated. Why do I have to go, she cried. I never wanted my visions to hurt anyone. Hassan held his daughter close, trying to be strong for her, though his eyes were filled with tears. On the day Amina was to leave, she said, Before I go, I have something important to show you a secret that doesn't belong to me. But to the village curious, the villagers gathered around, despite their fear. Amina led them to Chief Abdu's house, to a room that was always locked. Chief Abdu looked uneasy as Amina approached the door with a key she had seen in one of her visions. She unlocked the door, revealing a room lined with papers, documenting names and events the tragedies that had befallen the village. There, in the chief's own handwriting, were plans showing how he had caused many of the misfortunes to keep the villagers dependent on him while deflecting suspicion onto Amina and her father.